much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, good morning from wherever you are uh, listening and uh, watching this event. Uh, thank you very much to the uh, Havoc uh, Academy uh, organizers for this invitation. Uh, so today we'll be talking with uh, Milan about uh, COVID-19 uh, related to intelligence and the recent threats we have seen uh, in Microsoft around uh, attacks uh, that are uh, hanging from uh, the COVID-19 theme. Uh, a little bit uh, about ourselves. Uh, my name is Christos Antouris. Uh, I'm originally from Greece. I work for Microsoft uh, as a program manager for Microsoft Defender ATP and Microsoft Web Protection. Uh, and uh, I live uh, and work uh, in uh, the UAE. Uh, Milad? Hey folks. Uh, yes, so my name is Milad. Uh, origin from Turkey, also based out of the UAE in Dubai. Uh, have been with Microsoft uh, around nine years now, uh, always in the security domain. Thank you. So uh, we have seen rapid changes uh, in many enterprises uh, that were the reflex, the reflex uh, reaction from uh, COVID-19 and the changes that it had uh, imposed on everyday life. So it seems that uh, a virus was able to achieve uh, more changes than any uh, CIO had achieved uh, for months or years of, of their career. So we have seen that uh, organizations had to quickly uh, increase, for example, the VPN coverage, uh, move the resources to the clouds to enable remote workers. Uh, web conferencing was set up uh, so that people can work together and can collaborate. Uh, access to uh, corporate apps uh, was uh, reorganized to allow and enable uh, remote workers. Uh, the general concept of uh, working from home and how uh, a company can support their, remote, their workers uh, from home uh, has now uh, changed, and of course how we can divide, how we can provide uh, access through corporate or non-corporate devices. Uh, all this has uh, brought uh, changes not only to the organizations but uh, also to the attackers. So the land. Uh, the, the available threat surface uh, that uh, the attackers can now touch has increased and uh, sometimes it has not it has increased in a way that has not taken uh, security into consideration as a first priority so uh, here in, uh, in Microsoft uh, we look at uh, millions of uh, unique threat indicators uh, that uh, we generate every day uh, along with our partners and they are shared across Microsoft products and services. Uh, that, provided, that provides an unparalleled view into the evolving threat landscape and enables us uh, to rapidly detect and respond to threats. We analyze more than 400 billion emails, uh, data from uh, about 700 million Azure user authentications and accounts. Uh, and along with that, we analyze end user behaviors as they are coming from each of the pillars uh, of the Microsoft Health Protection uh, Suite. The information that uh, we will share with you today uh, stems from our analysis of SAT signals since the beginning of the year, focusing on threats uh, related uh, to COVID-19. As we have all uh, seen and experienced, uh, we live through uh, a continuous uh, denial of service with information overflow about COVID-19. Uh, our brains, our ears uh, are always hearing about COVID-19 relevant news. Uh, for example, if we look only at today's um, Google articles and news about COVID-19, we will uh, see about 340 articles released only today uh, and uh, there are announcements about uh, uh, new uh, cases, uh, vaccines, uh, tests, uh, all of them coming from different countries, from different parts of the world, uh, repeated uh, in the news, uh, in the channels, uh, in radio, everywhere. Uh, this uh, information overflow, of course, and along with the uh, 
uh, increased measures that each and every government takes to, uh, to protect the population are increasing uh, the amount of stress uh, in, in everyone. Uh, so uh, managing that information along with managing the, the fear and, and the stress that the entire situation is causing uh, is uh, a big challenge uh, for every one of us. Of course, the attackers are taking uh, advantage of that uh, because most uh, social engineering attacks or phishing attacks are based uh, on uh, luring someone into opening an attachment or clicking uh, on a link. And of course, this is a perfect opportunity. This is a perfect storm for uh, for uh, attackers that are running phishing or ransomware campaigns. Uh, so using that opportunity uh, with the same resource that the attackers have. It's not that they suddenly have new tools or uh, additional tools that they can use. They're using the same resource that they have, uh, the same funding that they have, uh, to move part of their uh, efforts uh, to include COVID-19 keywords into their campaigns. Uh, and the reason uh, for that is that since we have the, the stress and fear levels uh, on everyone are increased around this topic, uh, it's easier for someone to click on a link or open an attachment that relates uh, to the current situation. Uh, phishing emails with malicious attachments and URLs uh, remain at the top entry point for attackers uh, and mostly we see the same payloads uh, and kill chain but uh, the only thing that has changed so far uh, is the COVID-19 the COVID-19 thing. Uh, also, there was some there were some public announcements in, on on Twitter and other channels uh, from some uh, groups that they said that they will stop attacking healthcare or uh, critical uh, infrastructure uh, in order to support uh, the the efforts of, of governments to to protect uh, the citizens. Uh, though we have not seen this as being uh, the case, as uh, recently we, we saw in the news that uh, uh, hospitals and uh, other relevant uh, organizations in the sector have been uh, attacked as well. Thank you, Christos. Uh, yeah. So when we look uh, deeper into the, the threat intelligence uh, we have within Microsoft, what we've been seeing and what we've been disclosing uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks and we continue uh, doing that through the official channels for Microsoft is that first off every country had at least one COVID-19 related themed uh, attack so far and what we're also seeing interesting that uh, these uh, countries where attacks occurred uh, that there is an increase uh, right uh, happening so you can see actually in the, in the graph here on the left side like the top one was the uh, the uh, visualization of the impact of COVID-19 teamed attacks uh, based on the file count uh, that we've been seeing unique file counts uh, from April 7 and then you're seeing on the bottom the same visualization the same data points but refresh for April 20th and you can see, uh, based on the visualization, uh, a significant increase uh, throughout the world. What we are also seeing is a direct uh, relationship uh, between the increase of uh, attacks uh, based on the uh, restrictions uh, putting in place uh, by the governments, in particular when it comes to uh, things like uh, lockdowns or recommendations uh, from governments uh, to stay at home. Right, so uh, the social engineering based uh, attacks are significantly increasing uh, once a uh, user uh, is at home. Uh, and the assumption here is right, uh, giving that the, due to the information overflow and the, the stress level that is increasing, uh, people uh, tend to click uh, uh, more likely uh, at the moment than uh, they might have done before. But generally what we also see is uh, I mean, there's nothing pretty much quote-unquote new uh, in the uh, attacks, right? It's still uh, quote-unquote the same social engineering uh, based attacks to lure the person to do uh, what the attacker wants. 
one thing that we uh, were doing through uh, Office 365 uh, recently, uh, we picked up uh, and uh, stopped a, a rather big uh, phishing campaign uh, where there were around 2,300 unique HTML attachments uh, uh, exposed and these HTML attachments, they were looking like uh, financial compensation information, right? Uh, again, benefiting quote unquote from the fear uh, of the persons uh, with regards to potentially losing uh, their income. When we peeled the onion uh, when, uh, on the email side, what we're uh, right now having is around 60,000 COVID-19 related email phishing campaigns. Um, However, uh, just to give you perspective here, right, 60,000 uh, might sound a lot, but really it's uh, around 2% of all mail-related uh, threats that we're we are tracking uh, from a uh, Microsoft standpoint. Interestingly, also, uh, an aspect what we're doing is uh, through Smart Screen, just to give you uh, context. Uh, smart Screen is essentially uh, an extension of the browser, or actually now uh, of the operating system uh, that uh, tracks uh, potentially malicious uh, IP and URL uh, access requests. And uh, through that, we're seeing around uh, 18,000 COVID-19 related emails and IPs uh, getting uh, uh, ingested. And again, uh, just like uh, on the on the email side, uh, it's mainly the same delivery method. It's just they're swapping out the URLs, making sure that the URL has some wordings like coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, uh, et cetera, in there. What we also see is uh, that uh, when we look globally, uh, the vast majority of the tech, like the top targeted countries, uh, by the actual order is uh, China, uh, United States, and Russia. And yes, uh, we've been also seeing some uh, of the APTs and nation state actors uh, that are targeting uh, healthcare organizations uh, and using, again, uh, social engineering and uh, using the COVID-19 doors uh, as part of their campaign. An interesting uh, perspective that we wanted to share for this audience, uh, giving uh, the history and where uh, this conference comes from. Uh, we wanted to give you a perspective also uh, on this uh, uh, global view, but narrow it down to the Middle East and Africa, as well as give you a perspective on what's happening within the Gulf region. So again, what you're uh, seeing, it's really more or less aligned. Uh, like if you look at the regional view for Middle East, Gulf, uh, Africa, as well as like the, the total Gulf breakdown that it's more or less aligned to as the governments are putting the restrictions in, uh, there is an increase uh, that we are picking up uh, on the Microsoft site. And what it's, uh, uh, we can see here based on that is uh, Saudi Arabia is currently uh, one of the uh, most targeted ones uh, based on our telemetry and then followed by the United Arab Emirates uh, and then it goes down to Iraq, uh, Oman, uh, Qatar, uh, and Bahrain. So just to give you context here, uh, what we were doing uh, so far, uh, give you an overall idea on why we're seeing an increase, right? And we give you some insights on globally uh, what we've been doing, what we've been picking up, and then give you a regional view uh, of that uh, data. Uh, what we want to do now is essentially give you a few uh, also examples and dive a little bit more deeper into some of these aspects. Uh, the first one here is essentially uh, impersonation, right? So uh, attackers are impersonating uh, organizations like uh, CDC, uh, World Health Organization, the Department of Health, uh, etc. So any authoritative uh, source essentially that is dealing right now with COVID-19, uh, attackers are using their names and uh, uh, registering domains uh, similar to uh, theirs uh, in order to impersonate them, right? And then they will send uh, targeted uh, emails over to lure the user uh, to click on it. What we are also seeing is that uh, TrickBot and Amotet, as uh, a mobile family, are actively used. The only difference is, again, uh, a rebrand uh, to incorporate uh, COVID-19 related uh, keywords. And uh, what we also had uh, recently for uh, cust our customer base that is using Office 365 for ADP 
we had around 135 customers uh, that were targeted uh, by a spray attack uh, with uh, 2047 malicious messages. Uh, uh, we're based out of uh, the Loki bot uh, Trojan uh, that we were picking up and we also uh, blocked it uh, when it happened. And another uh, example would be, and you see it on the bottom left side, uh, is uh, the intel we picked up on Revel, right, uh, REVL. Uh, again, same infrastructure was used uh, by the attacker, uh, like uh, last year, uh, only difference, again, uh, is uh, making it uh, more COVID-19 uh, related. Thank you, Milad. Uh, another example case uh, is uh, related to uh, TrickBot, uh, but it's also being uh, reused uh, and uh, repurposed uh, to cover uh, for COVID-19 uh, themes. Uh, so what we have seen based on our uh, Office 65 ATP data, uh, TrickBot has been the most prolific uh, operation that is using uh, the theme of COVID-19. Uh, more particularly, the campaign from uh, last week uh, used several hundreds of uh, unique uh, documents, uh, attachments that uh, had embedded macros, uh, and they posed uh, as a message from a non-profit that was offering uh, free tests uh, for COVID-19. COVID uh, uh, and the behavior is uh, similar. I mean, if uh, like in other campaigns in the past, uh, if uh, the document is allowed to be opened and the macro to be uh, run, uh, it will use choice EXE, wait 20 seconds, and then uh, download uh, the rest of the payload, which is the uh, imposting part uh, of the bot. Uh, another example uh, that was seen uh, in around middle of April uh, was another phishing campaign that is using a legitimate link. Uh, so it's using a legitimate uh, URL from uh, OneDrive uh, that uh, poses as an uh, investment plan update for, for COVID-19 for the next month. Uh, so once clicked, uh, it will uh, not open uh, a document, but it will redirect uh, the user to either uh, Office, uh, to an Office login or to a Microsoft uh, login, depending on uh, where they will click, and uh, it will steal uh, their uh, uh, Microsoft Office online or uh, Azure uh, information. This is one of the examples that we have seen uh, using this uh, specific uh, URL. And of course, uh, whenever there is a, a global uh, issue with a global uh, uh, information, uh, the attacks are also becoming global and become uh, localized uh, to cover uh, different uh, parts of the world. Uh, so we have a few examples here that were mentioned by our uh, Microsoft Security Intelligence uh, Twitter account. So we are seeing that uh, there have been campaigns uh, using the language in the Polish language. Uh, there are campaigns uh, for uh, in the Korean language and also in the Slovenian uh, language. So this is a yeah. common thing that we will be seeing. Uh, for COVID-19 attacks. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I thought the question was down to, okay, like, how, where does this threat intel go and how do we benefit from it? Uh, just for the sake of this audience, right, uh, just uh, to, to give you a perspective, right? Oh, first, like, uh, like the Microsoft threat intel feeds, right, they feed into our products, right? So depending on what product you may or may not have, right, uh, these products that you have uh, are benefiting from the threat intel, right? Uh, one question that uh, I think will come up is uh, how can we tap into the thread intel? Right, uh, uh, simply like our thread intel is proprietary uh, for our uh, products reserved, right? So uh, any customer that is using our product sets are getting that. But in addition to that, uh, as you saw so in Crystal's example, like we are sharing a lot of the IOCs and a lot of the activities uh, through Twitter, but as well as uh, through our official uh, blogs. 
uh, we try to provide as much information as possible uh, through there. But what can you generally do, right? And I think for uh, this audience, right, uh, you will see that most of the uh, recommendations from anyone uh, will be very similar to all the recommendations that we've been going as security people to the business, to the IT team, and that we really should be doing that, right? Uh, starts with uh, making sure uh, you're applying uh, security updates, uh, making sure that w whatever vendor you have as your email security, your endpoint security, etc., that it is configured based on the vendor's uh, best practices. Of course, there will be certain adjustments depending on your need. MFA, I right, uh, can only stress like, the importance of MFA uh, uh, so much. Like it is a key. Uh, aspect uh, to the security stack, right? And it shouldn't be just for the VIP accounts, it should be for all the user accounts. Uh, and then tying with the conditional access, making sure that really only uh, trusted identities with healthy devices uh, are able to access corporate resources and services. Looking into then, of course, right, the, uh, the zero trust model, how do we uh, make sure we uh, provide the user what they need, but we validate uh, what they're asking for, when they're asking for it, and how they're asking for uh, the corporate information and services. Christos? Thank you. Thank you, Vlad. Uh, then, uh, last but not least, is it's all about education. Uh, and of course, as we're talking about the global issue, uh, we're not only limiting uh, our education efforts to uh, in, within our companies and organizations, uh, but we have to educate uh, ourselves, our friends, our colleagues, uh, because these kind of, uh, of attacks uh, can reach uh, anyone. So apart from washing our hands regularly and uh, using sanitizer, uh, we need to be looking uh, at certain things uh, when we uh, exchange emails or when we receive emails with links and attachments. Uh, it is very uh, common that uh, these kind of, uh, of attack campaigns are using very bad uh, translation services. So we will see words with bad spelling, bad grammar, uh, an uncommon way of using uh, the language, whatever language uh, the message is written on. Uh, of course, the links will not look right. You might see links that are misspelled uh, in the domain. Uh, like, for example, Microsoft or Microsoft.com. Uh, so uh, watch out for this kind uh, of uh, links uh, and uh, URL types. Uh, if uh, you see, receive an email that will cause a sense of panic, like you know, your bank account was suspended, was suspended because uh, you were found to be uh, uh, infected, uh, or, for example, if you receive a message that says you have been found to be associated with someone who is infected by the virus, click here uh, to report to the nearest authority. This is one uh, another example we have seen. Uh, be careful. They are made to make you uh, freak out and uh, click to open the attachment or follow the link. Uh, also, there may be cases that emails uh, will be spoofed to appear as connected to legitimate websites or companies, uh, but then they will redirect you to, uh, to a fake uh, website to uh, ask for your information. 